According to Claim Guide, Florida is home to seven of the top 10 riskiest cities in the country for home ownership. Yeah, not surprising, but still very painful. Hmm. The Consumer Price Index released late last week. It showed housing costs are up more than 7% over this time last year, so it begs the question, should you be looking to buy or sell your home now? Home builders are now abandoning projects on the U.S. housing market, like this house behind me here in Florida. There's simply too much inventory and not enough demand, and so they're having to stop construction. This is a bad sign for the housing market in 2024 and beyond. It's something similar to what we saw in the last downturn in the mid 2000s. Where home builders can more easily build homes because there's less regulation, have had lower amounts of home price increases, which is great news. And in fact, in places like Texas and Florida, for the first time, we've seen some evidence of their having overbuilt, prices have significantly softened. You can take three seconds, go on the internet and search Florida housing or Florida real estate, and you're gonna see a list of search results pointing to the fact that there is a massive shift going on in the Florida housing market. There is doom and gloom. And yes, I will grant that there is a lot of folks that literally know that anything that you write with Florida on it's gonna garner attention. So some of it is clickbait, but in the larger picture, the entire US economy is seeing another 2024 where real estate residential sales has fallen off a cliff. You have to understand that 2023 was a record low in the number of homes transacted. It was a 30 year low. We hadn't seen a number as low as 23 as back in the 90s. And you have to understand the population was about 20 to 30% less people in America back at that time to produce such a low number. So now you fast forward to 24 and you have a very fascinating converging data set. And that is this that the entire country is seeing a higher push for active inventory sellers that have been supposedly locked in with golden handcuffs at two and a half and three and a half percent 30 year fixed that would supposedly be comfortable for life and never sell because perish the thought they would move across the street and buy a different house at a 7% interest rate and give up the one they had. And all of us have been watching this narrative where people are supposedly gonna be locked in for life, but the narrative is changing in real time as some of the hottest markets in the country, markets like Miami, which is pushing 80% year over year active inventory increase, long lauded areas that have been absolutely pushed from a price standpoint as these popular areas grow by as much as 100% in doubling price in three to four short years. All of these markets are now throwing warning signs as buyers take pause and say, you know what? I might just rent and you can keep your house longer. And sellers, not just in Florida, but throughout the country are facing one of the slowest moving seasons, even slower than that of 23 many marketplaces throughout the country. And again, all of that in the face of a higher level of competing sellers pushing homes in the market. Now setting all these things aside, Florida being one of the most popular markets in the country, seemingly itself seeing no endless short of demand as people want to retire here. People want to own homes here, even though they live in other states or in other countries. And everybody has sat by wondering, will Florida's music continue to go on or is it starting to shift? Now, if you watch my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a fair, but I am a very deep diver in terms of data and I tell it like it is. Even though as an expert in real estate, I've sold nearly 4,000 homes, I still maintain a broker's license and sell a lot of real estate. I am not bashful at leaving my opinion in the marketplace, calling it like I see it, even while the rest of the people in my industry will a lot of times say, bye, 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 it's going up forever and all these kinds of things. My commitment in today's update is to give you a deep dive in Miami, Tampa, and Orlando, the top three busiest marketplaces in Florida, give you a pulse to know exactly what is happening in 2024 and I assure you the data is going to blow your mind. This update will be phenomenal if you're a real estate professional, a lender, and you're trying to understand and speak to these economies eloquently and with deep knowledge, or if you're a buyer considering jumping into the market and you wanna know exactly how things are, is it shifting in your favor, what kind of offer should you be writing, or if you're a seller and you've been watching this market spike to the roof and you yourself are interested in knowing if you're gonna to continue to be that equity paper millionaire on into 2025, you found yourself the very best deep dive update on these three markets on the entire interwebs and if you find a better one drop in the comments i'd love to see it myself but not everybody appreciates a no holds barred fair approach to telling you how the market really is and folks like that don't necessarily want this kind of news going out but if you do appreciate it drop down below do me a huge favor and smash the thumbs up so as many people as possible can see this information change is coming my fellow americans you will own nothing and you will be happy all right, Wendy, thank you. Well, a new report out tonight suggesting the price of paradise is starting to come down, at least here in Tampa Bay. I want to show you this map 
from Redfin. Now, the red dots here indicate the housing markets that are heating up across the country, but the blue dots, the blue dots show where the markets are starting to cool off. And as you can see, Tampa Bay and cities across Florida are there in the blue. All right, just before we jump into Miami as the first marketplace, I wanna show you the entire state of Florida. And this is great because this will kind of give you an index to compare each city against. If you're looking at the entire data for the state and you notice that, okay, the state is down in sales, but Miami is up, you'll notice that Miami is overperforming the rest of the state. So let's take a look at the first graph I wanna show you for the state of Florida, active supply of unsold homes. Now, this data, by the way, because everybody's gonna ask in the comments, comes from SunStats. This is only available to the Florida Realtors. You have to be a licensed agent to be able to log into the back end and derive this data from all of the sales in the entire state. And this is produced through May. So this is the most recent month we have. Uh, this will be last month, and you're gonna see a lot of comparison charts in the bottom below against last year. Now, you can see that we've been steadily on the climb in Florida, really unbroken except for early 23, when the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates, which caused mortgages on 30-year fixed to go from 2.5% to 3.5% as a range, all the way to 7%, you will notice that the economy really, and housing particularly, started to see unsold inventory as people really started to try and figure out what's gonna happen next. You know, people that were qualified to buy a house at 3.75%, and they kept getting beat out. They go back to the lender two months later and find out their interest rate's 6.5%. They got knocked out of the game and they just quit because all of a sudden their buying power was diminished by a lot of money. But look at this. You can see now that even though we had this weird balancing act in early last year, you had this equilibrium like, oh, is everything going to be okay in the marketplace? Because here it was, it was climbing off the floor, which we needed. We didn't have any inventory down here in early and mid-2020. And then you saw it kind of balance out and climb further. This is what's making news, folks, because look at these numbers year over year down below. We're 71% over last year in May. It means we have 71% more inventory than we did a year prior. 64% before that. And 53 you can see where the numbers are going. The numbers are mounting higher. And this is really wacky when you consider that these months where they're really spiking over last year, these months themselves are actually moving season months in Florida where traditionally these properties get absorbed, which only leaves us to imagine that we are having a real serious problem in headwinds of selling houses. Now, one thing I wanna point out additional, you might be looking at this chart and seeing, hey, Jared, there's 162,000 homes. And obviously, Jared, yes, I see this really drop off right here where all this stimulus and COVID and everything dropped the economy down. But look, Jared, if you look all the way back, there's a lot of months where we really were only around 140, 150,000 homes in what we would call normal times. So Jared, we're only at 162,000. There's no need to be concerned. Well, that's true, but are we selling homes at the same rate? And that's where the problem really comes in. Let's check that out. Now take a look at this. You remember back in the opener, I told you that we are chasing 2023 numbers here in 24. We are having a problem selling as many homes as we sold last year when there was a 30 year low of homes sold. There was a record low traffic inventory. You know what the narrative was in the public? The public was telling the world, you know, don't worry about the real estate market. It's really not that bad. The problem is buyers just don't have anything to buy. Hmm. Well, fast forward, we're now 70% up in inventory means buyers have almost twice as many homes to choose from. Many markets in Central Florida, they have twice as many homes to choose from as they did a year ago, and they're still beneath last year in terms of wanting to buy them in the face of having those choices. So we know that narrative is garbage, but look at this. If you go May, April, March, February, look at the numbers, down 3%, up 4.6. Well, that was good last month down 12.2. And then the two months prior, January and February, starting this year, you were barely positive. I didn't do the math, but I'm pretty sure we're still behind last year in Florida with a lot more inventory. And ultimately what's happening is you have a buyer problem. Everybody is focused on the fact that real estate can't crash because you don't have as many homes on the market as you did in the last great financial collapse. So you don't have big numbers to sell. No, 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 no. If you have a decent size amount of homes and the buyers just disappear, you have problems. And I got a chart that's gonna blow your mind just on Florida right now that says you are very likely going to see negative prices going in the fall, just like I predicted December coming to this year. Watch this. In the end, it's the local income that dictates where home prices go. And I know for some people that's a controversial opinion, 
because a lot of people like to say, well, you know, my housing market is different. There's all these people moving in. There's all these foreign buyers. There's all these investors. But folks, the reality is much of those buyers have gone away in this market. Now, many of you that watch my channel, watch Nick Gurley over Reventure Consulting. I use his Reventure app program for some of my things. That's what I'm switching to now. The reason why I was using Sunstats is because they have some things that his app does not have. But look at this. This is the state of Florida, folks. This is an ominous, ominous sign for the fall. Look at this. This is called median list price year over year. This is one of the best forecasters of what year over year price is going to do 90 days from now. And look what just happened. If you go back, this chart is a 2017 chart on the very far left. What this chart is telling you is that when homeowners are bringing their house to the market in Florida right now, they are setting the price lower by five and a quarter percent less than they were the same month a year ago. If you look at this chart in May, 2023, the median list price was 475,000 last year. This year you have home sellers setting their price at 450,000 and notice this, this is the lowest year over year asking price against prior year in the entire state. Okay, so this isn't a micro data point. This isn't, oh, we're looking at one city. This is the entire state of Florida is now putting price points into the market at a lower median than last year. Now, here's what happens. Think about this. Do people in a slowing market get more of their list price or less? Are there more people getting over 100% of asking price in a market like this? You already know the answer. They negotiate lower. So not only are they starting five and a quarter percent down on price in the same marketplaces against last year, but they're also probably going to negotiate another 3%. So here's what this tells us. This tells us that in 90 days time, there is a very real eventuality that you are going to see the median sale price. So the sale price in Florida now starts trending with losses. And the next chart I want to show you is the real reason that this is now starting to happen because this has never been seen in eight years. I bet you we could go back 12 years. You probably couldn't have seen this chart, which I don't have the data depth. This is the max that I can show you right here on the screen. But you can see for yourself, it's been dropping over time. The amount of money that people can ask against the prior year has been falling ever since the rates started going up. But the baseline right here against this little mountain you see, this is the zero line. So if people were here on this line, they would be asking the same as last year. Anything below this line is a predictor of future negative price, which is why right here, when you see, oh, Jared, isn't that point right there below the zero line? Yes, it is. That's because properties in the fall of 2022 were going to the market below the year prior, and guess what happened? Price dropped below the year prior just a few short months after that, and this right here, my friends, is the biggest leap below the zero line that we've ever seen in recorded history. Well, at least as far as the data as I have right here going back at years, as I mentioned before. Here lies the problem and where you see negative prices. Take a look at this. As of last month, the months of supply hit 5.2. That is a number that we have not seen in the Florida housing market going back to early 2015, Barack Obama was president. This is a major problem. This is where you start to have a clear sign that the market is imbalanced. There's a high inventory in relation to very few buyers. For those of you that don't know, months of supply if, is, is, is if you owned a store and you stopped putting all the toys on the shelf, how long would it take based on how many customers walked through the door for all the toys to just sell off the shelf? Now, in a balanced market in Florida, we already know from history that that's around a four month period of time. So if you stop listing properties in all the homes in Florida based on how many people wanna buy them, absorb them in four months, you've got a good market. When it goes five, six, seven months, you have the exact recurrence of what took place in 2008 that caused prices to go south, which is simply a high months of supply. Low months of supply, low inventory, a lot of buyers wanna buy them, multiple offers, waive your appraisal contingency, nonsense, right? That's what you saw right here when this chart is low. When you go up, prices respond, and that's not good. But my friends, look how fast it's gone south. Look down here, June 2023 at the very bottom of the chart. We were three months of supply. By September, we were at three and a half. From September to April, we went to a five month supply and now we're past that. Now here's the interesting reality of all this. We are seeing the market shifting in a weird way in moving season. If you look at Florida's transaction volumes every year like clockwork from spring and summer, this is when all the homes are sold. When you go into August, it's back to school. Everybody gets distracted and everybody relaxes and nothing happens all the way till mid-October when then you have about 45 days of transaction. Then November is here, game over, some sales between there and Christmas. The marketplace is really shutting down 
after August. So you'll notice back in 2022, we had a sizable shift in the market where everybody felt it really soft. It was the fall. The interesting thing right now is Florida is positioning itself for weird market weakness that it's not even recovering from when most buyers are engaged with the marketplace, okay? Now listen, I'm not here to panic anybody because you cannot roll up in a specific marketplace and just be like, I'm the boss, I'm the buyer. There's many marketplaces in still in Florida that will laugh you out of the building. There's many marketplaces where people wanna live, months of supply is not in your favor, it's still low, and there's many that are spiraling out of control, and obviously we're gonna set this as a background as we jump into Miami, Orlando, and Tampa through the duration of this video update. But I say all that to say this, you have to know the economy you're going into. You should see the activity history of the marketplace you're going to buy in or sell out of. You should understand what kind of months of supply you're competing with against the backdrop of history for the marketplace or the community that your home is found in. And probably the real estate agents, sadly, across the state don't even know where this data is, but you should really know it, keep your finger on the pulse, if you are transacting in the fall of this year. A lot of sellers think it's still 2021, and it's not. And the once reliable condo market isn't the same either. Kane said condo buyers are pumping the brakes on that too because of rising insurance costs and unexpected assessments. Tommy Bartolomeo bought his Coconut Creek condo in 2005. Then the market took a dive. I was down 80% like that, uh, stuck with it. So now 19 years later, I'm finally back in the black. So do I want to go through that route again? No. Um, so I'm definitely not going to chase the market. Instead, he's chasing what some call the impossible dream, finding an affordable home he and his girlfriend can share. To see the market housing prices double in a, in a few years, I mean, it's crazy. I couldn't say that I expected anything like that. Now there is a condo crisis brewing. In fact, more condos on the market right now in Florida than there have been in years. Broward realtor Thomas Kane said with interest rates steady at 7% and inflation at about 3.5%, a lot of buyers like Tommy Bartolomeo are sitting on the sidelines. My friends, you are staring at a chart of Miami unemployment rate. And I will tell you that one of the most darling marketplaces in the entire country is this marketplace we're about to look at. We're looking at the metropolitan statistical area of all of these markets. So this is the entire scope of Miami South all the way up to like Fort Lauderdale. It's a very big chunk of marketplace, but I will tell you this has been the most popular market in the entire country through COVID. And I say that because Miami is in the top five of whatever you have looked at over the past three years. When we that when people's minds are blown that even when most of the markets would cycle through the interest rate hikes of 22, Miami was impervious to it. It was still hot. It was still the number one growth area in Florida, which was the number one growth state. And obviously the eyes of the marketplace are watching, but I will tell you the underpinnings of Miami's strength is right on this chart and it is definitely unraveling. The reason I point this graph out is Miami's unemployment's climbing for about four to five straight months and 2.1% is the highest it's been since going back to the end of 2022 when it was falling, kind of recovering from COVID. Um, this is the highest mark, even though it's bounced around 2%, it's never crossed 2% plus. So something to keep your eye on if you're in Miami. All right, here we are. This is the Metropolitan Statistical Area. By the way, there's a little micro map. You can see this right next to my head. That gives you an overview of the metropolitan area. Obviously, it's like a slice of the entire state at the bottom here. All the charts I'm gonna show you today on all the metropolitan areas start around January of 2011. You say, Jared, why do you start there? Because that is where volume was really high coming and recovering away from the GFC. I kind of want you to have perspective of what it looked like back in those days whenever short sales were abundant and all those kinds of things. So one of the things I will say for Miami, Miami is well off of the bottom. You can see it's around 38,000 units. I think around 30,000 of those units are condos and townhomes, uh, which represents about 60, 65% of Miami sell-off. But look at this. You can see Miami's still running at a line well beneath its previous norms. And remember, it's not about how much inventory it's running in history. It matters how long it takes you to sell those 38,000 houses. Because if buyers back away, 38,000 houses with a high enough month of supply, just explained it in Florida, is enough to sink your price. But I have to show you, look how fast Miami's transitioned. Look at July, 2023. They were flat even with a year prior. Then they were up a percent in August, but it took off from there. Look at how the numbers have changed. 6, 10, 14, 18, 28. It's literally going vertical over the past 
11 months. And I'm sure buyers there can appreciate the change in circumstances. This is the problem, folks. This is why unsold inventory is spiraling out of control. If you cut a line through how many homes Miami was typically selling in the past, you'd get probably, if you averaged all this time up, you'd probably get 7,700 homes a month. But you have a lot of time right here, several months in the past year, where Miami can't even sell 6,000 homes. This looks like it was almost like a heart rate monitor. It was like up and down, up and down, straight in a line. And month after month, on cumulative time, this is thousands less homes sold in, a, in the past year, year and a half over what they're used to absorbing. And that's changing this marketplace rather quickly. Now look at this folks, pending inventory. Okay, pendings is a future indicator that tells you how many homes you're gonna sell in about three months. Are we gonna be better off in our sales going into the fall? According to May, May was down 13.4%. There's no inventory, Jared. That's why the sales are down. Oh, Miami's only up 60%, yet their sell-off is down 13.4. And the month prior was down 10.6, even though it was like 57% more homes to pick from. This is the problem. Buyers are off the sidelines. That is going to be a problem in the future. Inventory is going to climb in Miami into the fall. And let's check out what this is doing to months of supply. Miami in June of last year was three and a half months of supply, which if you look at the history of this chart, Miami usually runs around six months. They're used to having five to six or five and a half, something like that. Now you've got a three and a half month market last year, which is why everybody that was in the Southeast is like, there's nothing wrong. This market's hot. We're going to be fine. But it's doubled, nearly doubled. It's at 6.1 months of supply as of May, 2024. In September, it was four months. That is a massive shift, 30% increase in month of supply. When this goes towards seven months, eight months in Miami, you're going to see some dramatic list price changes. And as I mentioned a second ago, you need to check the area you're in. You need to look at the building you're buying. You need to see what the marketplace is actually doing, where you're at. There's going to be a lot of home sellers who are going to be pushing hard to get in the exits when this type of thing takes place. I'm speechless, folks. This is median list price in Miami. Look at the right side of this chart. Miami's asking price right now, median list price year over year is down 11%. 0.21%. May of 2023, you had a $608,000 median list price. A year later, you're at 539,000. Notice the chart. You'll see when this market started to tip over. This is going into 2023 and ever since, the median list price is sinking lower and lower in the Miami MSA. Notice over here, you say, Jared, look, I see the zero line. I remember what you said. If it's below that line, they're asking less than the year prior. This month right here where you see this blip, that is May of 2020. You remember we just locked our country down that same month and here in Florida was no different. And that is actually, I think the same month where we finally got to a reopening, but that was a very fearful month and obviously people responded. But you can see Miami's going straight down in its median listing price. Shows me the sellers are getting the message. They're going, we gotta, we gotta come down, we gotta come down. It'll be fascinating to see what median sell price does here as we go in the fall with this type of activity on the front side of the listings here in Miami. You can see median time to contract. This is how long it's taking people to sell. This is where sellers get anxious. And I think this is a near miss. Uh, you have 39% longer frame of time. So keep in mind, median's the middle. So there's a lot of people in Miami that's taking far longer for them to sell. But right now, this represents a 39% year over year increase. I just want to show this to you. Full disclosure, let's show the median sale price to this MSA. This is incredible, folks. Miami's still the undisputed champ when it comes to price because there is no sign of headwinds in the numbers for their price setting. If this were a plane taking off, you'd say that it has no issues making it to 30,000 feet, but you can obviously see um, this is from 2022 on. It kind of had a downward run and it went up and had another downward run and it went up. And so it's hit, miss, hit, miss, hit, miss. And ultimately you can see now that it's, it's pacing this kind of a downward flattening trend here in the last three months. And we obviously observed why. This will be a fascinating stretch. I have a feeling that if anything, and this is kind of a predictor going into 2025, you're going to have a settling effect like you did when the market had shock in May 2022 to the end of that year. To me, I would be shocked if it's not a lower descent than what you saw May to December of 22. So May, it was $450,000 median list price. By December, it was a $412,000 median list price. We were talking about Miami just saw a 10% price shock in their sell price in a six month run. That's what can happen. So it'll be interesting to see. I have a feeling 
you are going to see the fall putting some headwinds on this marketplace. And again, I think it's going to see, you're going to see a pattern similar to this stretch right here. Realtor Heather Espinosa is doing what she can to sell this three bedroom, two and a half bath town home in West Chase. This house has been completely redone. For her client, Air Force veteran Chris Weston. The laundry is upstairs, co located with the bedrooms. Thinking he'd sell it fast when he put it on the market back in February, but now, five months later, we've had one prospective buyer. After updating the home with new paint, floors, and appliances, and reducing the price by $40,000, it's not moving. Now, no particular order, we are going to jump into the Orlando Metropolitan Statistical Area. This is a massive area made up largely of four counties, Osceola, Seminole, Orange, and Lake County. Take a look at this. This is the active inventory on the left side of the chart. I'm going back to January of 2012. When it was a much different time, a lot of bank-owned property, a lot of foreclosure. It was at 17,000 homes on the far left. You can see where we are today on the right side of the graph, pushing the 12,000 unit line. 12,000 homes on market, this is single family including condos and townhomes. You can see the last time there were this many homes on the market, November of 2015. As you look at the chart, you can kind of see the history of the situation. We raised interest rates here, inventory shoots up, and then in early 2023, everybody started to feel a little better and we sold off a lot of this stuff here in this stretch of last summer. This was last moving season. It got active again. This moving season looks like this. There's unsold inventory. So there is a bit of a transition even in Florida's second hottest market. I would say Central Florida and Orlando markets runs right behind Miami and all of these most recent updates. But look at this. You can kind of see the history unfolding down here at the bottom. I'm gonna pull this chart up so you can kind of see the base here. You'll see down here at the bottom of the chart that the end of last summer was the last hottest tension that we had that resembled anything like what we were doing in 2021 and 22. So we had this kind of a recovery after interest rates shot up to 7%. And people are like, ah, maybe it's gonna be all right. Joblessness, unemployment rates were reporting really low in early 23. And obviously that had been responding into the market, but then it's been shifting quite a bit ever since. And the sentiment has been going with it. Look what's happening. We were two, six, 15, 22. And then it's just shot up to where it is now. So now we are chasing a 76% increase in supply year over year here in the Orlando market. And again, this one is closed sales, closed sales. Closed sales is the problem. So if you have inventory and people aren't buying them, you're gonna have unsold inventory. And that's when the market starts to transition. You can see again, we're much like Miami. We hovered right around three to 4,000 units. And you can see the entire, if you were to cut and paste the market activity here over here, you would drop down 500 to 1,000 units a month because ultimately right here, this segment is just anemic. And again, I've been saying, I won't even repeat it. Jared, don't say it's not inventory anymore. Yes, it's not an inventory problem. People just are buying at a lower pace. So we have the summer months. Again, you'll say, Jared is bouncing up. Yeah, that's moving season. It bounced up every year, way up here in moving season. The problem is this upline needs to be about a thousand units higher and it's not, and unsold inventory is persistent. Look at this. We are down most months over last year. You already know the narrative. Last year was hyper low, and now if you add all this up, just eyeballing it, we're like 5% below last year's sales activity with a lot more inventory. Just how much? Let's find out. So I just showed you the year-to-date numbers that we're, if you added it all up, we're four, five, six percent below closings of the year prior. But over that same six month stretch, look how many houses are hitting the market versus a year prior. Almost 20%, 26%, five and a half percent, 25 percent, 18 percent, all of them positive numbers, and they're much bigger than last year. And again, same thing, pending inventory. Pending is the future indicator of how we're gonna look in another two or three months. As you can see, in May, we're down 16%. So for pending 16% less two or three months from now, we are going to be riding closed sales are way off year prior. That is not good. So we'll have to see how that shakes out. Now, you all know me. I love a month's of supply graph. Again, this right here is the greater predictor of price softness. So when this graph hits the wall, this is when you kind of get tricky in the marketplace. Um, as you can see right now, we are at 3.6 months of supply. Would you believe it? That's 80% above a year ago. And what this tells us is that things are much more balanced. Okay. You'll remember I showed you Miami a few minutes ago. It was like 
five months of supply. And ultimately, what you wanna look at is how is that against the history of the marketplace? How does the market usually feel? Because when months of supply is really kind of what it's always been, the market feels normal, quote unquote normal. Um, when it gets and shifts low, that's when people are stressed as buyers because you're getting beat and all that kind of stuff. When it goes high, it stresses sellers. As you can see right now, is it high? Well, I'll let you decide, but I'll tell you this. The last time we were at 3.6 months of supply was November of 2015. So it's been a long time since we felt a 3.6 month of supply, but it's not way higher than the norm. Most of the time, Florida is around at least post GFC, post great financial collapse. We've really been around 2.7, 2.8. So the truth of the matter is we're well north of what this market's used to handling, way north of what it was uh, whenever we had about a month of supply, which is fine, we needed that. But it is really kind of uh, going in one singular direction. I'll let you make your determination for how you feel that's gonna balance out in the future. By the way, look at the median sale price in Florida. You can see that right now we are in May 1.5% positive. If you go back a month, 3.1, 3.6, 4.4, 4, 4.7. 4 Look at the trend though, okay? So we're 4.7 in December over prior year, then 4.4, then 3.6, then 3.1, then 1.5, okay? If you look at it on a big wide graph, because this graph goes all the way back to 2012, it looks flat. Um, but as you can see, like a train, if a train's going down a track 60 miles per hour, people think the marketplace just stops on a dime. It doesn't, it slows and then it stops and then it might change the other direction. You never know. Make your own decisions right there on the screen. You can see the data. And back to my favorite graph. This is median list price year over year. This shows us what asking prices in Florida, the Orlando Metro are doing against last year. Our sellers asking way more. As you can see, you'll notice here in the Orlando Metro that there have been multiple periods where sellers here adjusted below zero line, meaning they're asking less. Let's take a look at when those occurrences happen. You can see back here, going into the spring of 2019, people in 2019 were beneath your prior in 18. You can see that the market took pause here in January of 2021. And you can see at the bottom of the Fed interest rate increases whenever they shot the rates to seven, that going into 23, the Orlando marketplace pulled back on prices. I remember buying some really good flips coming back into this point in time. As we look at median list price now, the asking price is 440,000 versus a 450,000 median list price in this marketplace, which is down 2% year over year, which is better than the state at large. And it's well better than what Miami's performing. So when I look at these graphs as a whole, it tells me a lot, not just about Orlando so much, but about Miami. This is a Miami story so far in this update because Miami has been outperforming everybody. They have dwarfed everybody in market strength. And when you compare them against in Orlando, Orlando is definitely in transition. Orlando's one to keep your eye on and it's one to be careful with as a seller. This is a, you know, eyes wide open. How is the marketplace around my market? How should I price my home? Buyers, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna see, am I still in a crowd? I mean, there's marketplaces in the Central Florida market where you are one of many looking to buy the same house, where there's po tiny pockets of multiple offers. And there's some places in the Central Florida market that's fallen five, 10% year over year. Home sellers are way reducing prices in order to get out of certain marketplaces in weird pockets uh, throughout the Central Florida market. Let's jump into Tampa. Now this took all according to the claims guide study that says properties in Florida are quote overvalued by more than $50 billion with low income households at significant risk of losing home equity. The city seeing a staggering 40,000 plus properties at risk of flooding as of 2020, a number that's only expected to rise. Nearly half of St. Pete's home, 47% are at risk of flooding within the next three decades. Historically, things have been moving in the Tampa area, especially the West Chase area, is this was going to be, we're counting in days and weeks. Uh, and days and weeks turn weeks to months, and now it's just okay. Is there an end to this? A reflection of a new Redfin report out Tuesday that shows several Florida cities are in the 10 fastest cooling markets in the United States. And Tampa comes in at number two. If you listen this far and you haven't smashed the thumbs up, do that for me right now, please. Anyways, let's get into this. All right, Darling, Darling Market. This was to be the hottest market of all time, according to Zillow in 2023. I remember that headline. Look at this line, folks. Since last summer, volume has gone from 10,000 units to 17,000. 
thousand units. And you can see sometime back in 2018, this market started to actually see a little bit of a softness um, going into January. And I don't know, I don't see this in any other market in Florida. There were weird bounces like micro recessions in different parts of the housing market and like weird parts of like end of 18. I don't get it. I see it on charts all over the place, but you can see here that once this came out of the GFC, there was about 25,000 units and then it kind of rested. We'll just kind of call it right here at 15,000 or 16,000 units. So if you were to cut an average across several years pre COVID, that's, you know, that's probably where you'd find this market. So it's just punched through that they're 84% over last year. And if you slide the chart down, which I'm going to do right now, you can see that just like the rest of these Florida markets, when we were coming out of the early part of 23, again, the gas went back on in the housing market. So end of 22, interest rates shoot from three to seven. Going into 23, there was a lot of government spending. So the deficit spending that Biden is doing now, a lot of that started in early 23. And it kind of, I think, put a wet blanket on the goal of lowering inflation. There was a lot more capital coming in the market. People didn't know exactly uh, how that would shake out. But one of the things that we do know is that in early 23, that was the last three to five months of the very low unemployment rates before they came off the floor in the country and in Florida. And you can see that as inventory uh, went through that summer cycle, it tightened. So you can see July was down 8%, August down 4.9, just like Orlando, just like Miami, it has taken off like a rocket ever since. It has gone vertical. It's 2.47, 12, 16, 28. And then you can see the last three or four months, it is just compounded. Like that is a near vertical lift in Tampa, okay? Tampa, you have to be on top of your price, okay? I have people that are messaging me from the area. They're like, I watched your video and now I realize why my house is taking forever to sell. This is a big transition that's going on in the marketplace. Now again, a lot of this is coming from new listings. Sellers aren't selling, they're never gonna sell, they got lower, it's changing. Look at November and December at the bottom of the chart. You had 9%, 1.5%. January on, the game has changed in Florida. The numbers over prior year are just much, much different from any point at the bottom of the pandemic. Up 17, up 30, up 14, up 27.7, up 17.9, 18% over last year. And hopefully they're selling, right? Let's look at the closed volume. I say hopefully tongue in cheek because I know they're not selling. You know, we, we look at all these charts and look at this. Tampa, I think, has the worst closed volume against prior year of all the markets. Down three, down almost two, down 13, up three, three, and flat for May. So May was like the biggest comeuppance. You can see right here, awesome. We're trending against last year, but there's a lot of volume. There's a lot of unsold listings. There's a lot of property in that market for people to choose from now. So you've got 13, 15, 18, gave back three. So that's 14 and change. So this is 14% down year over year through May in closed sales. That is incredible. And, and that's not good when all you see all those new listing volumes are all big numbers um, and the closed volumes not keeping up. In fact, it's below prior year. But Jared, there's no inventory. There's only 80% more than last year. We need uh, like 200% more than last year. And then we'll have closed sales. It's weird, folks. The interest rate all through this pattern has just been around 7%. Most of this year, you've had an interest rate between 6.9 and 7.1% for the 30-year fixed excellent credit. That means people are probably still getting 6.75. These are numbers we saw last year and buyers are done. The price has probably gotten to a place where they're just not happy with it. By looking at pending sales, this is a leading indicator tells us how the marketplace is going to have in terms of closed sales in two or three months from now. Not good picture. Down 5.1, down 3.4, down 9. So according to this, pending volume is not increasing. So current activity in May, which is going to show you what June looks like. So we're in June as I'm shooting this video. It's going to show us we're going to be down again. Lo and behold, months of supply. I don't have to explain to you what this graph is. This is fascinating, folks. You can see months of supply in Tampa really is just over two months of supply. Right now, it's at 3.7%, which is nearly 95% over a year ago. It's nearly doubled. And the last time that Tampa felt the way it feels now, the feel of the market of, is it buyer favorite? Is it seller favorite? April of 2015. So it's been a really long time. You remember 
Orlando is in similar situation. Orlando, the central Florida marketplace itself is also right against about a 2015 timeframe. You'll see, well, Jared, why was it that high back then? Because the GFC was just absorbing the highs when you have inventory at like 7.1. And we know when you go six, seven months of supply in this marketplace, price is flattening out. But even then, you are starting to see that this marketplace is shifting in favor towards the buyer. I would say it's balanced, you know, like you're reading putts, you say left of center. I'd say we're, you know, the middle of the putt, if it's a center putt, it's a balanced market, I'd say we're just a tad in the buyer favor because historically buyers don't typically have this much to choose from and this much control in the market. It's clearly in transition, drifting away from the seller in this marketplace. All right, my favorite chart for the future, median listing price. Look at this, like everywhere else in Florida, the asking price, the official we'll called the price that new homeowners are setting on their price is now negative. It's the deepest negative going back to 2017 that you've ever seen on graph. In fact, Tampa's only went negative a couple of times early last year. And that's obviously when the market was shifting that rebound of, of buyers going, what is going on with this interest rate? That was the only other time, even during COVID, Tampa never really just touched its toes on pricing homes even with a year ago. This market, similar to Miami, never goes negative. It is always north of the line against last year, even when they had these major ups in price. But it, it's, it's been in a downward, downward slope. Will it stop? Nobody knows. Okay, so we are 425,000 against last year was a 439,000 median. It is down 3.19. So if memory serves, Miami is down 10, 11 percent. I think 11 versus last year. Tampa's down 3.1, and Orlando is down like 2.1, something like that. Bonus material. Port St. Lucie. I hope you guys see this. This is your update because a lot of people engaged with my last poll. Sounds weird. They engaged with a poll I put in my community comments and wanted to see an update in Port St. Lucie. I'm going to run through it real quick just for you. Look at this. Port St. Lucie, where are you at? You're at 1,700 homes. This is, by the way, a citywide poll of your market. The last time you were around this, nope, you didn't even hit it there. Nope, you didn't hit it there. Look at this. Port St. Lucie is September 2012. Look, your GFC numbers were 2,200 units. If your population is roughly the same size as it was back then, you guys might be in trouble. This is a lot of inventory for you guys. But this is 81% up, 1719, uh, and you have been climbing like everybody else uh, going back to September. If I pull this chart up even higher, you can see everybody was like doing kind of okay here, but you went from 900 units to 1700 in a very fast period of time, okay? So that's like double. You guys are nearly 100% up. That's a, that's a big number for you. That's a big number. But how is your sales volume? All right, look at this. So I like to look back here in history. You can see that your sales volume is like three to 400, three to 400. You had some peaks above 400 and some below. You dropped way beneath it. I don't know. It seems like you're still kind of absorbing a decent amount of real estate, but you're down, you're down. So your January, negative one, five, negative 24, three, negative three, six, negative 14, six, up to four, down 70. So you're still down. Let's see how many new listings you people are putting on the market there. So it's going north. You had a couple down months, but it's up here hovering around the 600 unit mark. If you look back in history, you only bounced above 600, one, two, three, just a couple times pre COVID. But look at this. You have four or five straight months where a lot of people are in your terms relative to your marketplace are putting homes in the market. Let's see months of supply. This is the market health for your market. You're at 4.3. Look at your running history. Your market stayed, I think this is much like Orlando, we're like three months of supply, three, two, you know, kind of in there. You're now three, four months straight, four plus. You were only plus four a couple months here in 2019, which again, in some of the markets, they had some weird spin end of 18 and early 19. You bounced above it in 14, and then the GFC, you were above six for a few stretch of months here. So you're on the high side. You're on the high side where this is definitely more towards a buyer favored market in history. Let me pull that median list price. Let's see what sellers are asking in your market right now. This right here is median list price year over year. You can see, surprise, you guys are actually right on the line. 
So this is the zero line. People in Port St. Lucie are listing their homes right against what it was last year. But ultimately you've been up. So you've really been trending for a long time. You've been plus four, plus five percent that people have been asking on their homes against the year prior. You've been sliding straight. So you've really lost five percent from your running trend coming into the end of last year. Ultimately, you are holding right on a break even ask. If your inventory keeps rising, you're going to see sellers now lowering against last year in order to get out. You're going to see this continue to slide downward. Be interesting to see. I'd be surprised if that holds. Let me pull one more county. I think there's one north of you. So that's St. Lucie. I don't know if Indian River has anything to speak of in terms of volume, but I'll show it to you just in case someone's there. So again, this again, same deal. It's it's still positive, you know, in uh, Indian River, but it is it's dropping. It's falling off like a cliff right here going into present. It's been, been like a year, this is a year slope going downward where people are just asking less and less. Again, they're still asking more than anything above this line is, is asking more than prior year. All right, that's it. We'll see you guys real soon.